Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're viewing from and what time you're viewing from. Hi everybody, my name is Dawn Forchette and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to the chalet. It's good to have you guys here. I'm going to straighten things up just a little bit before we get started. Uh, well, that made it worse. There we go. And I need to try to see comments. I don't know. What is up with Facebook? I want to beat it with a wet rag, I swear. <laughs> crazy, crazy Facebook. So anyway, as you um, find me in your news feed today, go ahead and say hello. Let me know where you're viewing from. This is good to have you. Make sure to invite your friends. The more the merrier, right? We as makers, we love to share. Alrighty, so today is going to be all about scraps, using our scraps of paper, because I don't know if you guys are like me, I am a scrap hoarder, and I need to use them. Like, I'm getting better at starting to cut my paper. All that pretty paper, right? Because quite honestly, they make more paper, and they're always going to make more paper and more beautiful paper, so we should be using it on our projects. Anyway, before we get started with that, I don't want to go ahead and talk about some things that are coming up here at the chalet. First of all, all of August, we have a kit sale, our kits collection. It does not include paper pumpkin, but our kits collection. Um, so they're up to 30% off, so make sure and grab them up. They make great gifts, or if you are traveling, that type of thing. Hey, Kristen, happy Sunday afternoon to you. Thanks for popping on, spending some time with me. Um, also, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, bonus day coupons. If you guys have been shopping with me uh, the month previously, you can use those coupons. Make sure to do so. It's hard to believe, but what is today? The 20th. We have 11 days left of the month. So make sure to shop and use up those $5 coupons. I don't want you guys to miss out on that. And let's see here. I told you about the kit sale. So you can double dip. You can use the coupons and take advantage of the sale. So, hey, why not, right? Why not? So anyway... Um, speaking of kits, just want to remind you of the September Paper Pumpkin is going to be with love and gratitude. And it looks beautiful. Even the box looks pretty. <laughs> I am such, I, I fall for pretty packaging. Like, that's just, I don't know, I love it. Anyway, sign up by the 10th of August to, excuse me, the 10th of September to receive the September kit and um, if you're not getting paper pumpkin with me yet give it a try it's it's really a lot of fun and the nice thing is is that everything is already pre-done for you basically and they give you all the things that you need um, to make the projects also on that note on this before I forget I'm kind of scattering all over the place <laughs> I need to concentrate. Anyway, uh, with Paper Pumpkin, there is an add-on, and it's available right now if you would like to get it, but it's only for subscribers. So it's called the Thoughts of Thanks Journal. Um, it's while supplies last. It's an 8x10 journal, so it kind of goes with this whole theme. And it is $15.00. And it's item 163270. So if you're into journaling, you may want to grab it up. Or if you know of a friend who loves to journal, that would be a great gift, wouldn't it? A cute little gift for them. So anyway, just wanted to let you know about that. Also, with Paper Pumpkin, I didn't even get to my class schedule, did I? <laughs> That's okay. We'll just do it in a different order. It's all right. So I received my paper pumpkin yesterday morning, I believe. And I wanted to show you guys the kit. I did put one of each together just to kind of see what it was all about and the difficulty level, yada, yada. So anyway, I wanted to show them to you. They're really pretty. 
So here is one of the cards and even check out the envelopes. And they're printed with the prettiness all the way into the envelope, which is really cool. And here is one of the cards. And we have these little embellishments that they gave us as well. I guess it's supposed to be like dew uh, on the lilies. I don't know. Not, these aren't lilies though, are they? They are, I don't even know what they are. So somebody help me out. Anyway, they're a pretty flower. And that's all that matters. <laughs> and the stamping is on the, I call it the lily pad. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I just think it's really cute. Very pretty, right? And then here is the other. And again, the envelope in itself is gorgeous. And then here is the card. Isn't that pretty? And then on the back, it talks about the forget-me-not flower. Very, very cool. I love it. A water lily. See, I am, I was right. <laughs> Some call them the lotus blossom. Okay. All oh, right. Well, that makes sense. Thanks, Kristen. I, yeah, you guys need to keep me on track because, you know, sometimes, I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to some things that are happening at the chalet. So for those of you who are local or somewhat local, if you would like to participate, we'd love to have you here. Um, I'm in the Lettington Scottville area, first of all, just so you do know. And like I said, we already covered the coupons. Let's talk about the catalog kickoff. So I know a lot of my customers, you guys are getting your catalogs in the mail. I use a mailing system through Stampin' Up. And um, I send one to myself so I can gauge when you all are getting your catalogs. So when I got mine, I was like, yep, they're gonna be getting their catalogs, which is always really exciting. So with that being said, I've had a couple of you call thinking that the items are available right now. They are not, unless you'd like to go ahead and purchase a starter kit. And I do wanna talk about that for a minute because um, there are items like I'm going to show today that because they're not going to be available till September 6th, you're gonna to have to get on it immediately to order them because what I'm gonna show you today is Halloween, fall Halloween. So if you're wanting these items to get them in enough time to start working on your projects for fall and Halloween, you may wanna go ahead and consider, hey Judy, happy Sunday afternoon. Um, you may want to consider just going ahead, purchasing a starter kit, and put the items that you want into your kit. Um, this way, you're going to get them in a, in a little bit quicker, be able to work on your projects a little bit speedier, and you're going to get a discount on it. Because a starter kit gives you a discount on your product. And then what's really cool, once you get that and you start working on those projects, because you've purchased the starter kit, you've now technically have become a demonstrator. And with that being said, you can now shop immediately as you join to, hey, Evelyn, hello, happy Sunday afternoon. Um, you can immediately enjoy the discount that us as demonstrators do. And then you'll, of course, want to get some Christmas stuff. So it's a great way to dip your toe into the water, so to speak, to be a demonstrator. There are no obligations to have to sell anything. You can purchase products yourself and be a happy, savvy shopper and get the discount. So if you're at all interested, just let me know. Here's the information right here uh, on that. So as I show you guys stuff, I know I'm teasing you a little bit because the catalog does not go live until September the 6th. So with that being said, once again, if you wanna go ahead and just purchase a starter kit to get some things right now, you can. So just let me know on that. Okay, back to what we were talking about. Um, in case, of course, you, you guys wanna follow me a little bit further, maybe you're new here at the Chalet, uh, you can join my community group on Facebook. It's Dawn's Creative Chalet Community. Also on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Dawn's Creative Chalet. Um, make sure to tell your friends. We're starting to get quite a few subscribers and I'm super excited about that. I Thank you so much, you guys, for following me. Like, this is just my own little corner of the world, being a, a stamper and being happy, but I'd love to share it with all of you. So thank you, thank you so much. Make sure to hit the 
bell so it turns black so you get all the notifications as I load things into YouTube and do a little bit more with it. And of course, check out my blog, which is dawnscreativechalet.com. Um, in about a half hour after we're done with the live, what I like to do is make sure that you have uh, close-up pictures of the projects that we're doing today. And then I also feed the live into my blog as well. There's also a list of items that we've used today. So if you have any questions, you can check that out. Like I said, some of them that we're using today are not available until September the 6th. Um, and also, of course, my online store. And this is the host code right here. And if by chance your order is $150 or more, first of all, you should be purchasing a starter kit because <laughs> that's only $99 and you get $125 a product, free shipping and a free paper pumpkin. But otherwise, if you're happy just being the customer, that's okay too, because I love my customers. And um, I try to strive and give them the best in customer service. But anyway, with that being said, go ahead and use that host code if it's under $150. Uh, otherwise, if it's over the $150 mark, please do not use the host code and take advantage of the free product credit that you'll receive for yourself. Alrighty, um, back to classes. My gosh, I am all over the map today, aren't I? I apologize. <laughs> But at least we're getting it done, right? It's better than not getting it done. So first of all, we have our catalog kickoff on Thursday, September the 14th here at the Chalet at 10 a.m., 1 p.m. or 6.30. For those of you who attend my classes on a regular basis, this is going to take place of card class. However, we're basically going to be making four cards. Um, we're going to be making four cards from four different stamp sets because you're going to get a flavoring, a sampling of what is in the holiday catalog. Um, I'll have some munchies, so we'll be able to stamp, sip, snack, and smile. <laughs> so anyway, I'm looking forward to that. I'll have my products out so you can see, feel, uh, touch the products. Not all of them. I can't afford all of them, but... Um, enough of them that you'll get a very good idea of what is in the catalog. And, you know, I always say this every time and it's so true, especially our paper. I know Stampin' Up! tries really hard to um, photograph our papers, our embellishments and that type of thing. But when you see it, like hold it, see it, look at it, it's so much better in person than it is in the catalog. So please join us, we'd love to have you. Just make sure to RSVP no later than the 11th of September. And it's $25 or free with a minimum order, but you do need to RSVP for all of my events, just to mention that. And then for Sip and Stamp at Starbucks at the Ludington, Michigan Starbucks in September, we are moving the date. It is on Friday, September the 15th. Okay, we're doing that because of Labor Day and then the weekend right after, I will be out of town for a demonstrator event. So um, I won't be able to be at Starbucks. <laughs> but anyway, just note the change. For September, it's on the 15th. Then we're going back to the first Friday of the month as we get into October, November, and December. So that is noon to two. We'll make a free craft. If you want to purchase a coffee or um, a munchie, something like that, you're welcome to, but it is not required. So just come on over and have some fun with us and bring a friend. Also in September, we have a product included class. It's called All About Autumn. And if you guys seen last week's Facebook Live, um, I believe it was last week, I worked with the product from the All About Autumn suite. It is so pretty. Um, anyway, so that is a product-based class. So it's going to include the designer series paper, the ribbon, and the embellishment in that class. It's $43. You'll receive a $5 coupon to use on any size order during the class. And make sure to RSVP no later than two weeks prior. So by the 14th, I'll need to have you RSVP for that class as I'll need to order product and let's hope 
I mean, let's hope that things don't sell out really fast right after the catalog goes live on September 6th. And by the way, that's another reason why you may want to purchase a starter kit so you can get these items now and not have to worry about that. Take the stress out of it, right? Um, also into October, I'll have class, the card class on the 12th of October and then the product class on October 26th. I don't want to get too far into October. As it is, it's overwhelming just to think that September is almost here. But just mentioning dates for now. Um, gosh, other than that, of course, we have our online exclusives. Uh, things that are not going to be in any publication. So please make sure to check those out in my online store. And I will once again shamelessly <laughs> show the QR code. And what you do is you take your phone, you act like you're going to take a picture, tap on it, uh, the screen, with it focusing in on this QR code, and it should take you right to my online store where the online exclusives are. The next time that they'll be refreshing with some more new product, I believe is in November, um, I know that the Trucking Along Bundle has been a hot little commodity. Hey, Marie, hello. Am I going in and out? Hmm, gosh, I certainly hope not because that could be very distracting. <laughs> so we're going to roll with it and keep our fingers crossed uh, for sure. Or leave and come back in and see if that will help. Okay, so Marie, maybe leave and then come back in. But um, try that just in case. No, I'm not. Okay, because I know on my screen, actually, guys, it is like flashing strange things on my screen on my laptop. So if I'm fine, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. I was like, gosh, I'm going to crawl into a hole. Wake me up when it's over. Alrighty, so you guys ready to get started with a little bit of stamping now that I've talked your ears off. So something I wanted to show you, of course, I can't open up the catalog in front of you yet. Um, I'm tempted, but I can't until September the 6th, but it is beautiful. And by the way, if you don't already have a demonstrator, and if you do need, thank you, Judy. If you do need a catalog, let me know, and I will make sure to get one to you. But if you do already have a demonstrator, then please, by all means, get one from her or him. Alrighty, so the products we're using today are new things that are in that beautiful catalog. And one of them is this DSP. I've chopped into it a lot, so you're gonna see bits and pieces of it, but it is, is really really good stuff um and i will show you guys just a little bit of it like i said and it's it's been chopped into massively but just to give you an idea as far as the cuteness of it i love the bones paper i think that that's so cute and the back side has these dancing skeletons just they make me happy it makes me smile i look of course i'm into plaid you guys know i'm mad for plaid this piece is very interesting it has sections that you can cut and use as parts of your card which is pretty cool so it's like the background's already been done for you and you just go ahead and create a little bit more along with the background. Um, I've seen some super cute creations so far from other demonstrators that have gotten their hands on the products. And with that, the other things I wanna show you, they have this adorable, I know it doesn't look like anything. <laughs> oh, that's great, Dawn. Ooh, white paper. But actually, and I wish it, I could get it dark in here, but this is glow in the dark paper. And then we also have glow in the dark embellishments. And they are, let's see if I can find them. Here we go. So there are little bats and ghosts. These are so cute. So I'm going to have to like hide in my bathroom and take a <laughs> picture of this stuff for you guys. I've been meaning to do that and I keep forgetting. Now I've seen somebody who I believe must have stamped on this paper and then die cut it out and put it on her card. And then she took a picture of the card with it glowing in the dark. It was the coolest thing. It was the skeletons. Um, so I want to try that. And it's it, this almost feels like 
it's, it's got a texture to it. It's smooth, but it feels like the smooth grit sanding paper. I think that that's the best way to describe it. Um, so I'm wondering like how well it really does take ink. I don't know. Hers turned out very clear though, as far as the stamping in black on it. And then, like I said, she took a picture of her skeletons glowing in the dark and it was the cutest thing ever. So we're gonna have some glow in the dark paper for you along with some bats and ghosts. And what's really cool about this is you can use, you know, all of our dyes on this paper. So especially if you have kids, grandkids, it'd be kind of fun for them, right? I'm a big kid at heart, just saying. And I do love Halloween. Those of you who know me know I do love Halloween. Also, with that being said, mainly we're going to use this bundle today. This is called Tricks and Treats, and um, it is so cute. And before we go, I'm going to show you guys a couple of projects that I've put together using mainly this bundle. And I say that because I've been kind of double dipping into another bundle that I'll show you in a second. And I know I've showed you these things, but just in case some of you maybe here for the first time, maybe are brand new to stamping and happen to run into me here on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, whoops. But anyway, I just like to show these things again, tease you a little bit more. <laughs> that's, that's what we do. We enable, right? We love each other and that's what we do. Um, anyway, so this is a super cute set and it's like a, um, two-step stamping where you can make the little Frankie or the vampire. I love this cute little haunted house. We're going to use it on a couple of cards today. And then the sentiments are super cute. Now, with that being said, there are these dies in here which are falling all over. I've been using them so much that the sticky is starting to not stick so well. I need to actually get one of my magnetic um, sheets and put them on that. So this big thing right here, you need to cut two of them and it'll make a bag. And I'm gonna show you that after we're done creating today. I made some really cute bags. Now these funny looking things right here, they are like what a hole punch would be for on the sides of your bag. So you can thread through to make handles on your bag. Does that make sense now? So you have a larger hole and the smaller hole and they're perfectly aligned so that when you do cut your bag out, let's say this is your bag front right here, and then you can perfectly center it so they will be perfectly spaced for you. I know sometimes when I make bags, it's like my crooked eyeballs don't do a very good job and then I'm poking holes, but they don't match up really well. Well. Here's your answer right here. And the thing is really cute is even though this is a Halloween set, this bag maker is evergreen. Like you could use it for any holiday, any occasion, uh, any types of pattern paper. Uh, I haven't used it with cardstock yet, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work with cardstock. I've been using designer series paper with it, which is not as heavy as our cardstock, but go for it, try it out. It should work. Um, I also love this little boo, and of course there's the die to cut out the haunted house. And this little tag here is so cute. It fits the eek in there very nicely, and that's what we're going to use on a couple of the cards today. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, this right here is really cool as far as on the side of your card if you like to have a little border. But it also works with the bag topper, you know, like when you get... Um, a cookie or a treat in a bag and it has a little jagged edges like the paper old old-fashioned paper bags remember those <laughs> anyway you can use it on the top of your bag and it gives it a totally different look it's really cool and I'll show you that I think yes I used it on two of the bags that I made that I have here to show you after notice how I'm teasing you to make sure that you stay with me so you can see these really cool projects one of the things I made is a sampler it's it's really cute. It's an eight by eight sampler. So don't miss out on that. Hang with me. Also, here are the um, the other tags, the, another tag die. This ghost is super cute and you'll see that on my projects that I'll show you in a bit. This right here fits the trick or treat in there nicely. 
I love that shape. It's, it's really cool. And then also, like I said, we have the ghost. And then this is the vampire face that you can cut out. And of course, we have the Frankie face. Oh, and this right here. So this I used on one of the bags that I'll show you at the end. So you're like, what in the heck is that? Does anybody know what this is? It's a candy. I will give you that. It's a candy. And it's a candy that I really don't like. <laughs> I don't know why. And I know some people go gaga over it. And by the way, you can find that said candy at Walgreens. Because I was just there and I did buy some. Because I need some for my display. But this will make candy corn. So flipping cool. Um, so yeah. Candy corn is available at Walgreens, so get it while supplies last. But anyway, so this is a really, really cute set. If you like Halloween, I would say this would be one that would be a really good investment because of that bag in itself. The bag is great to have for any holidays to make little party favors, um, little things for your coworkers the people who deliver to your door, whether it's the postal carrier, the UPS man, all those people that you want to give a little treat in. It's always fun to decorate the bag, right? So anyway, that is the main bundle that we're working with. But we are also working with Bag of Bones. This, is, this set cracks me up. And when I first seen it, I have to say I was overwhelmed because... Look at all the dies. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? But what's really cool, there is a sheet of paper that I didn't have left in the pack that I was showing you, but you can cut out these, this little skeleton guy. We'll call him Scully. You can cut Scully out of the DSP. And also there's his little uh, barking friend, the Scully dog. And then there's also a Scully cat. And there's pattern that you can cut right out of the paper, all of these little elements, or you can go ahead and just stamp them and cut them out yourself that way. Um, there's a bunch of little elements to dress up your Scully. So he has little cowboy boots and a cowboy hat, a top hat. You can make them like all dudded out. Um, also, there's this cute little rose and there is a like a little isn't there like a raspberry beret kind of a thing? It reminds me of a song. Anyway, and then if you wanted to build skeletons to be dancing or whatever, you have the uh, random parts, the random bones. And here's his little torso here. And you can do anything you like with Mr. Scully. Um, <laughs> make him doing some really wild dance moves. Then, of course, there is the cute little fencing, and this is the, like, grass if you wanted to use an, on the edge for a grass along the edge of the fence. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's full of fun things. Oh, and the little dancing shoes there. Like, it's just cute. It's very, very cute. So, anyway, I'm using today just the happy Halloween sentiment out of it but I wanted to show it to you because I just think it is stinking cute. And by the way, I love, this is the mausoleum. Is that what they call that? The mausoleum and the uh, headstones. So just fun, fun stuff. And I like the sentiments in it too, which are really, really cute. They just are on a play on the whole thing. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's get some stamping in. Um, so today is about using scraps, which you guys could see I didn't have all of my paper in my pack because now I'm just trying to use up scraps. Uh, so with that being said, here is card number one right here. And, oh, I'm going to need the bats. Let me see here. I need some bats. Just a moment before I forget. So we're going to take them out of, or did I get them? Nope, I did forget them. How could I forget those cute little bats? So I don't want to forget those. We're going to stick those on there like so. Alrighty. So I have all these little bits and pieces. I did do some stamping ahead of time um, because I wanted to cut them out, that kind of thing. So I wouldn't keep you guys here all day because you know me, I talk way too much. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, let's give you guys, I got some extras of my white in case I messed up. Get my DSP right here. And what I did do for something a little different, I'm gonna get you guys to vote whether we use, let's see here, we have a couple of little ghosties. So this stuff, whoa, is cut with the, um, the glow in the dark paper, the boo and the ghosts, or we'll have the haunted house. Of course, I use the haunted house on my sample. So you guys tell me while we start to get things together, vote and let me know if you would like me to use the haunted house on this card that we're going to create, or if we should use the boo and the, uh, of course, we won't use two boos, but I cut out a couple just to have them, uh, and, the, and the ghosts. So go ahead and share that while I go ahead and share with you some um, measurements. So first of all, this is a piece of basic black. It's cut at four and a quarter by 11. It's scored at five and a half. The inside piece is basic white. That is cut at four by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick this inside before it gets in the middle of the mess <laughs> and attach that with some uh, seal. There we go, and that's out of the way. And then what I did do is I cut out four strips of designer series paper. Um, this would probably work best if you have, hey Beth, happy Sunday afternoon. I just seen that you were here. Um, it would be, probably be best if you had DSP that was going non-directional, if that makes sense. But if you do have it going directional, just think about the way you're cutting it or if you don't care, that's okay too. Because I on this one, you'll see, I meant for these to go directionally, but they didn't. But you know what? You, it doesn't really, it doesn't look bad. I mean, it just doesn't. Because people are focused on what's in the middle of the card anyway. But that's just a note in case you are thinking about cutting. You're like, oh, what should I do? Um, it's easiest if, if you do use non-directional pattern designs. Okay, with that being said, you'll need two pieces of DSP cut at one by two and seven eighths. And you'll also need two, did I say two? You'll need two of each. So two at one by two, one by two and seven eighths, and another two cut at one by four and an eighth. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them around the exterior of the card at about one eighth of an inch apart. Alrighty, let's see here. Oh, and the middle piece, the white piece, is one and three quarters by three. And you only need one of those. I just have a few spare in case I messed up massively because, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start with one of my smaller pieces that's cut at one by two and seven eighths. Even the back side of that is really cool. It's like a big scenery uh, for that particular piece on that side, which is a lot of fun as well. So it's really hard to cut into the paper because I love all the patterns in this paper and I didn't want to ruin any of it. <laughs> and like I said, it's kind of like a big haunted scenery. It's, it's so cool. Anyway, so I just, went ahead, I took the plunge, and I cut the paper. I know, it's tragic. But hey, we gotta use up that paper. Okay, so this one I did, I, I guess, cut it correctly. That's cool. All right, actually, yes, I did. Oh, I was good on this one. The other one I wasn't paying attention to. But anyway, anyway, I digress. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to put these on the card front. It's just like a cool frame. And again, you're using up uh, your scraps. That's what it's all about today, using up those scrap pieces. Because they just drive me crazy just sitting in the bag of designer paper. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I keep all my scraps in the packaging that the paper comes in. Everything goes back in there if it's part of that designer series paper. 
So after a while, it's like, okay, I have all these scraps, I need to do something with them. So before I go ahead and continue to adhere this to the card, let's do the stamping, but I'm gonna see what you guys voted on here. Let's see. And I'm not really, yeah, Facebook, I tell ya. I don't know, it's goofy. We'll go ahead, let me see here, let's play. We have this and that, yeah. That might be kind of plain, huh? Maybe we need to go ahead and just use, let me see. Let's play a little bit more. And maybe have the ghost popping out. That may be kind of cute. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know, let me know. I'll wait just a couple seconds here as I play just a little bit more. And maybe a boo. Uh, I don't know if I like the boo on it. It might, I think it takes up too much room for the size of the, the white piece. Maybe we'll, we'll go, I'll use one of the ghosts. Cause that way then I can take a picture of it later and show you guys what it looks like in the dark. The haunted house and the ghost says Beth. All right, we're gonna go for it. Let's do it. I feel saucy. So I also want some bats on this because we have to make it look a little scary, right? I love Halloween. I know I've said that before, but I really do love Halloween. It's, it's the holiday where you can act weird and nobody cares. Although, wait a minute, that's every day. <laughs> oh, Dawn, behave yourself. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stamp some bats in there, just like so. Oh, and I also need the eek. That's right, the eek. I'm gonna see if all this is gonna fit on there now that I, there we are. Isn't that cute? I love it. What a cute font. And go ahead and get a couple of dimensionals because I want this little haunted house to be popped up a little bit. Oh my goodness. I can't seem to get a grip on those dimensional uh, little thingies, the coverings, the, the peeling thingies. <laughs> and before I put that down, put a little bit of adhesive on Mr. Ghosty. We did a name for him, Casper. Who watched Casper when they were little? That's showing my age. There we are. All right, cute. So we'll go ahead and attach him on here like so. And that is basically card number one. And I didn't even need my spares. <laughs> so what do you guys think of that one? Isn't that cute? I love it. Hey, Beth, are you were you born on Halloween? That would be a cool kind of a, a birthday party, wouldn't it? That'd be very cool. So you can tell, actually, it has a different color than the white. You can tell it's yeah, like glow in the dark stuff. So that's gonna be fun, right? Okay, let's go on and move to card number two. Use up more of our scraps. And with that, I did grab some of my gingham, uh, black and white gingham ribbon, which is from the annual catalog. Cause I wasn't sure if I wanted to add this ribbon or not. And <clears throat> give you guys a whole bunch of um, cutting instructions here. First of all, this is basic white, thick cardstock, cut at four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And this is the card that we are making. Again, these ideas are great because if you don't like Halloween, you like fall, or you're just going to go dive right into Christmas, since I, I know some of you are, you can do this with all those scraps from any pack of paper, right? It's evergreen. You can use it for just about anything, which is what I love about today's Facebook Live. So with that being said, like I said, I've had all of these scraps. So we're gonna use them up. So we have two pieces and the, these two pieces are one and a quarter by one and a quarter square. And then we have, I'm gonna make sure I get this right here. We have three pieces that are two and a half by one and a quarter. 
Um, and that is, let's see here, one and a quarter. And then we also have, do, do, do. Okay, that's the three pieces. Two and a half by one and a quarter. And then we have two pieces at two and three eighths by one and a quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and scatter these guys like so. It's kind of like a puzzle, right? Like that. And then you have this piece that'll go down here and this piece here. Look at all these other patterns, they're so much fun. Okay, and then I decided I wanted to stamp on this. It's a very flat card. It's basically just using stamps, ink, and paper. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp the sentiment, and this is from Bag of Bones. A happy Halloween. Love the font on it. And we're gonna stamp that up in black. Right like that. Oops, honestly, I should have been using my um, piercing mat to stamp with, but it's all good. It's gonna look scarier that way, right? <laughs> That's my story, I'm sticking to it. Now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the liquid glue. Liquid glue, even though I know I have a love-hate relationship with this, and it's the fact that I, um, whoops, I hope I didn't lose you guys. I just had a phone call come through. And who called me knows that I'm on my live. Hmm. <laughs> Why are you calling me? Anyway, what's nice about um, our multi-purpose liquid glue is that it gives you a moment to position it before it dries. Whereas with our seal, once it's down, uh, you can try to peel it off, which sometimes I can do, but it ends up being kind of a hot mess, if you guys know what I mean, and it's not pleasant. All right, make sure. Yep, we're doing good so far. All right, and I'm just going to work my way around the edge, and then what I'll do, usually what I like to do is from there, gluing my inside pieces in place. And put that one right there. And I just love this. What I do think is so cool about this too is it really features our Pretty Designer series papers, or as I like to call them, DSP. I said that the other day and someone was like, what does DSP mean? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, designer series paper. It's one of those silly acronyms that I use because I've been around all this stuff way too long, <laughs> which is a good thing. Okay, there we go. So that is card number two. Now, just for sake of playing around, and I have it here anyway. Where's my bow maker? Let me use this. I'm so dependent on this little thing now. Um, because I've never been the best bow maker in the world. And at least these look a little bit more like a bow. And cut off the tails. And you guys tell me what you think, if we should add the bow or not. I'm so used to adding embellishments, ribbons, all of that to my cards. Even though as cute as it looked by itself, I was like, oh, it needs more. You know, I want to add the bling and the ribbons, but I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Ribbon or no ribbon? And while you're thinking on that, I'm going to go ahead and grab the last card. Nope, it wasn't my dad, <laughs> but it was another person that starts with a D. Yeah, that person should know better, Mr. David. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, this too, just to give a tip, I know I wrote it down in my notes and I almost forgot to say, I know I explained in the last card, but just a little tip to choose four double-sided non-directional patterns and you can then cut one and a quarter inch strips two at a time to create your panels. 
So again, just another way to do it quickly if you wanted to really be speedy and make some cute cards in a very timely manner, you could do that too. But, um, and pretty much the, my patterns I picked were non-directional except for the Boo Eek and the tombstones that, of course, you don't want them floating upward. But anyway, so that is card number two. Number two. I see Kristen laughing over there. <laughs> I know, right? Like, hello. <laughs> okay, this is the last card. And like I said, I have some other things to show you guys, so don't go away. But this is um, our third and final card. Isn't that cute? And I use um, the glow-in-the-dark ghost and again the haunted house I just think it's so cool the only thing I wish we did have a die on that we've had in the past but we don't this year is a spider web yeah probably I'm thinking so that he just forgot like what day it is what day is it what time is it but anyway I wish we had a big spider web I think that would be so cool anyway so let's go ahead and make this card. I've used pumpkin pie for my card base. And this is cut at four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. The inside liner is basic white, cut at four by five and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and just paste this puppy into place, just like so. And we're gonna work on the exterior of it so I have basic white. This is four by five and a quarter as well. Then we have our piece of, oops, I got all these pieces here. <laughs> we have our piece of pumpkin pie and this is cut at three and a quarter by four and a half. Three and a quarter by four and a half. And then we have our DSP and let's see here do 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 we have two pieces of the pattern dsp cut at three by one and an eighth and let's see here two wait a minute uh, why would i have two i don't need to cut oh wait yes two <laughs> oh my gosh silliness dawn silliness so we, the DSP is at three and one and an eighth and also three by one and three quarters. Um, this is the three by one and three quarters. Okay, we only need one of those. I don't know why I put what I did. I wasn't thinking, obviously. And then we need two cut at three by one and an eighth. So that's these two pieces here. So two of this size, one of that size. I decided to just play with color. I didn't know. There is Starry Sky featured in this uh, pack of designer series paper as well. So I did cut one of those just in case. I did use black on the original, but I also um, stamped one in pumpkin pie. So I don't know. What do you guys think as far as color? I'll kind of put this together and go ahead again and let me know. Let me know what you think. Which color should I use as far as the haunted house goes? So I'm going to go ahead and attach these pieces, keeping them about an eighth of an inch from the border and from each other. Ish. <laughs> yeah, I should be using my liquid glue and here I'm back to my seal. Old habit, I guess. And I love this pattern. It just says boo and eek all over it. And of course the bones. I'm gonna go ahead, whoops. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> it's super sticky, it's sticking to my fingers. And there we are. And go ahead and let's see here. I'm gonna attach this piece first to the card base. And I think, I'm not sure if I did it on the other card. I want to go ahead and attach this with dimensionals. Looks like I may have. So let's just go for it. So Haunted House, should we try Starry Sky, Black, or Pumpkin Pie? 
Ooh, I kind of rhymed on that, didn't I? By the way, that really is pumpkin pie. I know a couple weeks ago I kept calling pecan pie pumpkin pie. They shouldn't do that to us. I am bound to screw that all up, you know? That's just the way I roll. All right, and I'm gonna take this bow that I made earlier because I still didn't attach it to card number two, so we're gonna borrow it. So let's see here. There's pumpkin pie. You guys seen it? Black. A black, or there is starry sky. Evelyn says black. Likes the black. What do you guys think? Anybody else want to vote? <laughs> I know that there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm always like, hmm, no one's saying anything, but that's because you guys hear me a couple seconds after I'm speaking. All right. Nobody else is voting. Okay, we're going to go ahead. We'll stick with black. I almost thought about, ooh, that's kind of fun. It really pops, but it's kind of like, oh, there's that color that's random from nowhere, right? Because we didn't use any of the Starry Sky pattern, but if you would have, that would have been really cute for sure, definitely. Okay, so we're going to use black, and I believe I stamped one up, but just to do it, just because... Sometimes I, I don't know, I prep for these and I just go a little bit crazy and overdo. I forget that I'm actually here to stamp. Whoops. And just like that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and attach the haunted house with dimensionals. So I just loved I love everything popped up. And we're going to put him just like that. And I think I want to go ahead and use a dimensional on the back of that as well. Kind of fun. And then we're going to attach the bow with a mini glue dot. Actually, I'm going to use a couple just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And attach him like so. And we need our little ghosties. I was going to say, oh my gosh, they floated away. <laughs> I had them buried. So I'm going to use a ghost on here. I think that'll be fun. And we'll use a bat. I feel saucy today. We'll use a bat as well. There we go. Whoops. Kind of want them on an angle. All right. That is card number three. Let me know if you guys have a favorite. So there is card number three. Get all this stuff out of the way. Card number two and card one. There we are. How fun, right? So some great ways to use your scraps. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys a couple more things that I've made with mainly the uh, Tricks and Treats bundle. So here's a cute little bag we use, of course, with the designer series paper. And I made those candy corn with that dye that I was talking about. Number three is your fave. Awesome. I like that one too. I really do. So again, um, with those dies I was telling you about where you could punch the holes evenly and you can do that on both sides. And wet. In fact, one of the boxes that I did make that I didn't bring over here to show you, um, and I should have, you can run both of these because you're using designer series paper. You can use that little hole punch die and run them together through your stamp and cut and emboss machine. And that way they're perfectly, like perfectly evenly aligned, which is pretty cool. But I just think that that was a lot of fun. Isn't it cute? I mean, who wouldn't like to get a cute little something in one of these? And then I made another one. This one again with the haunted house and that is stamped in starry sky. And we used a boo on it. I should put a couple of glow in the dark bats on it as well. I think that would be 
a lot of fun. But again, I used the, um, that little zigzag die for the top to give it that kind of, I don't know, it's, I just think it's an extra cute little touch on that. And then for the grand finale, you guys ready? So I wanted to make a sampler. I was a little hung up on this. I wasn't sure. I'm like, hmm, does this look cheesy? I don't know. But nonetheless, I just wanted to use a lot of the Halloween stuff that we have and put together a sampler. And this is what I came up with. <laughs> like I said, it's kind of goofy, but it's just fun. And I wanted to use the glow in the dark paper, so I cut the ghosts out with that. Um, also, the moon and the stars are the glow in the dark paper. Oh, it looks like that one moved. It's crooked on there. I'll have to fix that. And then um, using the mausoleum dies in there, I did cut from the designer series paper the cat, the dog, and Mr. Scully. Uh, the bird is actually from Pick of the Patch, which is another, it's more of a fall, little bit Halloween. There's pumpkins in it, and I did use a pumpkin from that on the sampler as well. Um, but it's just just fun. This background here is from that piece that I was showing you guys where you could cut it and use it for uh, on cards with different backgrounds. That was like pre-cut uh, images. Anyway, it's from that part of the designer paper so I wanted to tie in that starry sky color a little bit more within this because I didn't use a lot of starry sky. I kept focusing on pumpkin pie and basic black and our grays, our uh, gray granite, and our basic gray, and our smoky slate. So it was fun to work with the starry sky a little bit. And then this moon here, um, I used our stylish stitch shapes, I think it's called. <laughs> Sometimes my brain just doesn't work. But anyway, long story short is I just wanted to use a lot of stuff on it. Uh, so you can get a feel for all of it in there, but I need to straighten that up because they really weren't glued very well in there. I just was popping it into the frame just to show you guys the sampler in the frame. But hey, thank you. Thanks. I'm glad that you like it. Anyway, so if you come to class, you'll be seeing this displayed. But with that being said, I want to thank you guys again for being here. Um, I appreciate you so much. I hope that you've had fun today and you've learned a little bit more about how to use some of those scraps that are in your packets of designer paper that are just laying there ready to be used. Next week, I will not be here. I will be coming home from Las Vegas. Um, I will be at a leadership event, a Stampin' Up! event. So I will probably post some photos of anything that I see that you may be interested in or some fun things that we're doing. So I will not be live next Sunday, but I will be the Sunday after that. So I'll see you in two weeks. That's crazy, right? It'll be September. Oh my gosh. So with that being said, you guys have a great week and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.